morning and welcome again here at Rhythm Church, our online church service. And thank you so, mu so much for joining us and participating in this online service. Now, we've been busy talking about the feast, the banquet. Uh, God's inviting you to this feast. And last week we, we, we talked about uh, the breakfast, lunch and dinner. And all the time I was thinking about what's on the table. Now, I think there are plenty of things on the table. Uh, it's not just one thing. But one main ingredient on the table is, of course, the Word of God, your Bible. And, and I thought, let's talk about the Bible. Just, just uh, basic stuff about how to work with the Bible, the purpose of the Bible, um, God's calling on the Bible, how you apply the Bible in your life, and, and, and just basic stuff about the Bible. That's what I love about America, is um, their love for the Bible. I mean, from the biggest churches just here in Austin, uh, is all about Bible churches. The, the, their name is whatever Bible church. And, and people genuinely love the Bible. Uh, Christians in America love the Bible. They love going through the Bible verse by verse. And it's beautiful. I love it. But also I think we, we, we need to go, I wasn't so deeper, I, I think we need to understand the whole of the Bible. <laughs> um, all the different purposes, usage of the Bible. It's not just uh, an information book. It's not just a book we need to study. It's not just a book we, we use for uh, apologetics, fighting and, and arguing and breaking down strongholds. And It's more. And, and that's what I want to talk about today. It's, it's a book. It's about information. Yes, and we're going to look at that. It's about transformation and it's about application. I mean, it's a love story. It's a, it's a letter written to you and me from God the Father. And, and it's not just an information study book. Yes, we need to do that. And, and we need to do it well. And, and we need to grow in how we study and use and eat the Bible and get it into us. But we also need to let it transform me. Yeah, needed to work within me, change me from the inside out. And then I also need to apply it even where it's hard, where it's difficult. I need to apply it. So something about information, um, transformation and application. Let's start with information. I love uh, Paul's writing to Timothy, a young pastor. Uh, uh, he's leading the church in Ephesus. We've talked about this and his calling and purpose. Uh, Paul wrote to him and said, first of all, I want you to pray. When you are a pastor, you need to pray. Pray. First of all, get the congregation to pray. Pray. It's so important. Pray. It's very important. But he also told him, teach and study the Word. So prayer and the Word. Uh, look at this scripture, 2 Timothy 3.15. It says, And how from infancy you know the Holy Scriptures. From a young child you studied the Holy Scriptures. Remember, Holy Scriptures to them were the Old Testament, okay? It's not, not the Bible we know today. For them, the Scripture was the Old Testament, the prophets, the Psalms, the book of Moses, and all of that, the, the judges and the kings, and those uh, books were the Holy Scriptures for them, which are able to make you wise for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. So the book alone can't save you. The Holy Scriptures alone can't save you, but it will make you wise for salvation in Christ Jesus. So you can study your Bible and you can miss Jesus. You can, you can be a scholar, you can be a professor in knowing Greek and Hebrew, but if you don't know Jesus, no salvation. So Paul is saying to him, you, you've known the Scriptures since you've been a baby, but it's salvation through Jesus Christ. And then he says, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting and training 
in righteousness so that you, a man of God, may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. So all scripture is God breathed. Now, I, I, I must say the truth. I, I must tell you the truth. Um, when Paul is writing this, he didn't think the letter He's writing to Timothy, will one day be in the Bible. He was just writing, Holy Spirit inspired writing a letter to Timothy. He was just writing a letter to the church in Colossians. He was just writing a letter to the church in Ephesus. So, so, so Paul didn't know that 300 years later, people will come together and have big meetings, discussions on what will be the Bible. So when he says, um, all scripture is God breathed, he was talking about the Old Testament, uh, which they had a lot of already combined and put together as holy scriptures. So later on, we add the New Testament, we add the Gospels, we add the revelations of uh, 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 of, of John, the Apostle John on the island, and, and we add scriptures that made the whole Bible, and today we believe all scripture, the new Bible, um, is all inspired, and, and, and I believe it's all inspired, and, and God gave it for us, but the reason He gave it was for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training. So we need to study this book, this Holy Scriptures. And, and, and we need to use it for apologetics, for uh, arguing. We need to use it for rebuking. We need to use it for correcting and training. But so many times, that's all we do. <laughs> so many times, it's just about knowledge for us. Um, and so many people feel, I, I don't have confidence to talk to people because I don't have the knowledge. I didn't go and study. Uh, there's so many scriptures and so many deep stuff. I mean, it's a thick book and there's a lot of differences and a lot of arguments and translations and all of that. And, and I can study till the day I die and I will not know enough. And it's true. But still, we have to use it and study it. And use it for teaching, for rebuking, for correcting, for arguing, for breaking down strongholds, for breaking down wrong thinking about life, about God, about the world, about sin, about heaven, about hell. So yes, the Bible needs to give us information, direction, right and wrong, and all of this for fighting, arguing the truth of God, the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. So, yes, we need it for information. And Paul says for, to Timothy, study. Study this word. Get it in you. Read it. Pray it. Meditate it. Get it in you so that you know how to live and do this as a man of God. Thoroughly equipped. But it's not just for information. It's for transformation. So, in the book of Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews, which we don't know who it was, the writer of the book of Hebrews, he said the Bible, the Word of God, it is alive, it's active. And it can transform you, it can change you. So w when you study it, it's not just for you to fight with or argue with or correcting other people. The use of the Bible is to change you. Transformation. Let's read it. Hebrews 4.12. It says, For the Word of God is alive and active. Remember, Word of God for them? Old Testament. The Word of God is alive and active. Sharper than any uh, double-edged sword, uh, uh, sword. It penetrates even the dividing soul and spirit. Ooh. Yo, it penetrates even to divide soul and spirit, that's heavy, joints and narrows, marrows. It ju judges the thoughts and the attitudes of the heart. How difficult that must be. And nothing in all creation is hidden from God's sight. Everything is uncovered and laid bare before the eyes of Him uh, to whom we must give account. So the Hebrews writer is saying, 
The Word of God is not just a book. It's alive and it's active. It's not just information. It is w walking around. <laughs> so, so we know John 1 says that the Word became life and dwelled among us. And we could see His glory. That was Jesus. Jesus is the Word of God. But we do have a Bible, a written form of Jesus today. But He's alive. That book is alive. Jesus is alive in that book. It's not just a study book. It's not just a book you're going to write the exam about. It's not just a book you can get in university and work through it or a medical thesis book where you work and you discern and you write and you cross-reference and you check. No, it's alive. And it is a sword. Uh, Ephesians saying it's the sword coming out of your mouth. He, uh, Revelation saying the sword, the word of God is like a sword coming out of his mouth, cutting, discerning. And then the incredible work of discerning between spirit and soul. Oh man, I can't explain it to you. I, the difference between your soul and your spirit, we got words and we try to say the spirit is the connection with God and your soul is your personality and talents and stuff like that. But to be honest with you, it's so entwined. It, it, it's so mixed inside of you. That it is only the God-breathed word out of the mouth. The rhema word, the spirit-influenced word of God that can discern, that can divide, that can change, that can do such a deep work inside of you. So, so there's a difference. We know it in the Bible, different Greek words. Logos is the written word and rhema is the spirit breathed word. So you read logos, you read the word, but the next moment the Holy Spirit take hold of that word and, and it becomes a rhema word inside of you, a live word, an act word, a word that changes you, a word that challenges you, a word that convicts you, it judges you, it's alive and it's working inside of you and it's transforming you. The big thing is you need to allow it to happen. It will not happen automatically. Just so you can stay with information your whole life. You, you can go to church every Sunday. You, you can read your Bible every morning, every night. And, and it's all information to you and it's interesting to you. And you can have debates about it and you can have fights and arguments about it. And you can be very intellectual about it and, and well done for you. But if the word doesn't become rhema, alive inside of you, it doesn't change from logos to Jesus, John 1. The word has become flesh and dwelled among us and it became alive and it's with us. He's the bread of life. He's the water. He's the spirit. The, the manna of the Old Testament. He's the alive manna today that we need to eat. I mean, it needs to become alive to you. Now, that only happens when the spirit is with you when you are reading, when you are studying, when we are preaching. It's the Holy Spirit that needs to make the Scripture come alive. Opens up, some words pop out. It challenges you. It convicts you. It works inside of you. Listen to this. It's not then about other people. Then it's about you. So many of the information is about the arguments we need to have in this world, the debates we need to have in this world. But so much of the transformation, it's actually just about me. Hearing what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to me about transforming me. And this word will come in and it will even cut between attitudes and thoughts. Huh? Have you tried to uh, convict your children of a bad attitude? Where's an attitude? It's in the, you know, he's got a bad attitude. Well, I don't have a bad attitude. It's in the body language. It's in the, 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 the tone of your word. It's in an attitude. You can't pinpoint it. You can't put your finger on it. You, you can't see it. You hear it. You see it. You feel it. But how do you... Pull out an attitude out of a teenager. 
Well, the Word of God can do that. It can discern about thoughts and attitudes. So we need to study, read the Bible, but we also need to, 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 to open up our hearts and our spirits and say, come Word of God, challenge me, change me, transform me, and change my life. Uh, lastly, we need to apply it. So it's not just about information. It's not just about transformation, very important. But then eventually we need to do application. And so many people, oh, millions of people in the American church, they sit in church and they've got information. And there's very little transformation. Yes, there's something about uh, he convict me and I confess my sin and I become a better person and I stop a little bit and all of that. But the church and the world, they look so much the same. And we try to walk, you know, this narrow path between the word and the, and the church and uh, uh, the world and the word. And we try to be in between. But the real, the real challenge is total application of the word when, when we say well that's what the bible is saying and i don't care the culture and i don't care, uh, care about the fights and the apologetics and all of that i need to apply the word to my day today listen to this james 1 22 says do not merely listen to the word What's that? Information. Getting in information. And so deceive yourself. Do what it says. Application. Anyone who listens to the word but does not do what it says is like someone who looks at his face in a mirror and after looking at himself goes away and immediately forget, forgets what he looks like. But whoever looks intently, I like that word, intently looks into the perfect law gives free, that gives freedom and continues in it, not forgetting what they have heard, but doing it, they will be blessed in what they do. Application. Now, this is the question. Do you apply the wisdom of the Word of God in your everyday life. Not as a law, but as wisdom, as principles, as transformation, life change principles. And the difference, you will be blessed in everything you do. Now, I can give you so many scriptures. Joshua 1, take the word in morning and night and everywhere you put down your feet that will be yours you will be blessed in everything every situation psalm 1 and all of those scriptures promising if you take the word of god and you apply it you will be blessed your life will be amazing <laughs> things will work out for you financially physically relationally all the different aspects of your life, in your work, in your environment, in your sports, in your hobbies, in everything you do. If you apply the word, you will be blessed. Now, it's your choice. He says, you do get people that go to the mirror, look at the mirror and say, oh no, I've got a scar or I got uh, a mark or I got my, my woman looking at the mirror and say, oh, my mascara started running and dripping and I look like Halloween, you know, my face and it's bad and says, oh, it's bad. I can't go out like this. Look away from the mirror and go out like that. Or your hairdo, hey? Um, it's all over the place. And you look at it, you see it in the mirror, but you are so busy you are so scattered brain and you run out and you get in the car and you get out of the car at Target or wherever you are and you get out and still your hair is looking like that. He says, people are doing the same with the Word of God. They get the information. 
they start praying about transformation. Say, oh, the word is beautiful. Oh, today's sermon really touched me. It touched my heart. God convicted me and I could see. I can see my mistakes. I can see what I need to do. I can see why we need to grow. I can see there's so much more in my life. I need to get better. I need to do better. Oh, I can see it. Woo, I need to change, man. And you turn away and you don't change. And tomorrow again you look in the mirror and you say, Oh, I can see it. My heart feels it. There's transformation. I'm convicted by the Spirit and the Word and it's beautiful. Oh, I need to change, man. Look at my face. Look at my hair. Look at my, my, my mascara or whatever. Look at whatever I'm doing. You know, look at me. No, I need to change. And you don't do it. That's application. To say, well, I know I must stop doing this. And then you stop. <laughs> you say, whoa, 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 whoa. what do you mean you stop? You stop. Can Christians stop? Yes, Christians can stop doing things. Why? Because the Word of God is alive. And it's transforming you. And it's changing you. And it's giving you the power to do it. You must just stop making excuses. You must just stop having bad days like we say and say, Lord, today I can see my hair is not right. I'm going to comb it and I'm going to fix it and I'm going to go out today applying your word to my everyday life. If your word is saying pay tithe, I will pay tithe. If your word is saying be nice to people, I will be nice. Be kind, be kind, I will be kind. Be loving, I'll be loving. Be forgiving, I'll be forgiving. That's what the word is saying and I'll do it in every situation. And I know what's my weak spots and I will work on that and I will stay away from that and I will put guardrails up and I will have accountability in my life. But I will start to apply the word. I will find out what's my gift and I will live in my gift and I will share it and I will serve with it and I will make a difference and I will be the person that I need to be. The Word of God is for information, transformation and application. I want to stop with the how. How do we grow in our relationship with Jesus in the Word? I think five things and I tried my best to make it, you know, some catchy word and play with all the letters and all of that and I couldn't. Sorry, I was just not clever enough. So the bottom line is you need to listen to the word. You need to read the word. You need to something about study the word. You need to meditate the word and then you need to apply the word, do the word. So quickly. You need to listen to the word. That's preaching. That is when other people gives you their interpretation of scripture. You don't have to eat it up as, as just, okay, he said it, I believe it, that's done. No, you, you need to listen to the word and then go and read it for yourself and study scripture for yourself. Cross-reference, check it. Whatever the guy was saying, whatever I'm saying, go and listen to the Word, read the Word, and study the Word yourself. So no, that's the work of the pastor. No, I'm just there to help you in it. I'm just there to challenge you to open your mind and say, maybe it's got another interpretation. Maybe there's a deeper meaning. Maybe there's something else in the Scripture. Let's discern together and Listen to the word. The problem with only listening, if we stop there, only listening. America listens to the word, information. The problem with that is we can't preach all the scriptures <laughs> in the Bible. We, we just have, what, 60 Sundays, 53 Sundays a year, whatever. It's impossible. So you've got to read yourself. <coughs> there are so many scriptures that I've, I've read, but I can't tell you since when last have I heard a sermon about that scripture. Um, and I listen to close to three, four sermons a week of other pastors listening to their words. And, and, and there are so many scriptures we just don't get to. But you can get to it by reading the Bible. And then 
study for yourself. You say, oh, I don't have time. Come on. You watch TV, you watch football, you, you, you read other books, you read newspapers, you read emails. Come on, we do have time. If it's a priority, listen to the Word, read the Word, study the Word. What does study mean? A little bit of playing on, on Google, a little bit of playing on the internet and cross-reference scriptures. People, a hundred years ago, it was all in books and you had to own the book or go to a library for that book or whatever. It was difficult a hundred years ago. Today, it's in your office, on your computer. Everything I've got, you can have it too. Everything I'm reading, you can read it as well. And it's just typing it in and getting it on the internet and start studying for yourself scriptures. But that's all about information and maybe a little bit of transformation. But the last two, the meditation and the application. What's meditation? It's when you read the Word, study the Word, listen to the Word, and you stop. And you say, Lord, I want this Logos to become Rhema. So I'm meditating on it. I'm thinking it over and over. It's in my mouth, it's in my stomach, it's in my mouth, it's in my brain, it's I'm thinking, it's in my body, it's working with me, I'm struggling with it, I'm meditating on the word day and night, he will be successful, God will bless the one who meditates on the word day and night, who, who, who listens to it, who read it, who study it, but then meditate on it, allow the word to become alive in you. To become rhema in you. Who challenges you. A sword in you. Who's doing an operation inside of you. So, sorry again. Most people I know just want the information. Great, great sermon today, Pastor. Oh, we love the sermon. Oh, love the Word of God. Oh, we love it. Great sermon. I read the Bible to my kids at night. Great reading. Oh, great. Oh, I love the Word. Stop. Don't just finish there. <laughs> Don't just get it done with tick the box and say, information got it new stuff new revelation Woo! wow great sermon no take it inside of you meditate on it so holy spirit what were you actually trying to say to me is there something in my life that i need to change this word what must i do with it not just how must I listen and how must I uh, teach other people and how must I show the finger to them and say, you are wrong, you are wrong. What must I do with the word? How, how do I keep it inside of me for a while? Meditate on it. Meditate on it. How will it look in my day? How will it look in my conversations with my husband, my wife, with my kids? How will it look in my friendship? How will it look at office? I want to meditate, meditate, meditate on the Word. And then, applicate. Uh, apply it. Say, so today where I used to drive in traffic and get mad or whatever, today I'm going to drive in traffic and I'm going to apply the gentleness, the patience of the Word of God in my driving. I'm going to apply the, the Word of God in my conversations, in my jokes, in my hobbies. I'm going to apply the Word of God in everything I do. People, it's a lifestyle change. You, you do it two days, three days of the week. You miss a day or two. You fall back. You, you challenge yourself again. You start again and you carry on. Eventually, we will come by, uh, we will come by the place of information, transformation, application. Eventually, we will come to the place where we can do the Word of God, not just listen to the Word of God. So listen, read, study, meditate, do. So on this, what about your Bible study? Are you going to change the way you do Bible study a little bit? Are you going to change the way you do church on Sundays? Are you going to change the way... You, you work with the Word. Information, transformation, application. 
how about this week when you go to the table, breakfast, lunch, dinner, and you take in the Word of God, you read it, you eat it, you meditate it, it, you allow it to transform you, you allow it to change you, you allow it to touch you deeply and cut you if necessary, and then you apply it. So let's pray for us to work better with the Word of God. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, we come to you and we just thank you for the amazing book, the Bible. And yes, we know how it grew and where it came from and all the letters and it's written by people, inspired by the Holy Spirit. But we also know it can be alive and powerful and changing and it can be amazing, powerful book. But then we need to apply it. We need to meditate on it. We need to use it properly. And right now I'm just praying for myself and I'm praying for everybody listening saying, I want to grow from information to transformation. From transformation to application. Yes, we want to listen to the Word. We want to read the Word more. We want to study it better. But most of all, we want to meditate. We want the Word to become part of our DNA, changing us deeply with the power of the Holy Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. And then we want to apply it. Thank you for this. Thank you for your Word. Thank you for the life in the Word. And we can go and do this now in Jesus' name. Amen. Thanks again for watching and enjoying it with me. Uh, you can email me, text me, send me a message, and I'll have to pray with you and to hear from you. God bless. See you again.